Hello everyone, welcome today. Today, the world is infested with zombies. And well, we here at the Proving Grounds had to evacuate. But there's good news. They say Canada is spared this zombie apocalypse. So let's hit the road today on Death Road to Canada. So, if you ever saw the Oregon Trail, which was a parody of the Oregon Trail, with, except with zombies, this is kind of taking that concept to a more gameplay level. While the Oregon Trail cloned the Oregon Trail quite faithfully in a more zombie-esque environment, this game has a lot more gameplay versus just RNG events and buying and trading with little hunting scenes. So, the progression system in Death Row to Canada is controlled by zombo points you earn during the gameplay, for one thing, since this is a game driven also by a lot of RNG. But on some of that, you do get some customization options, like you can make... While most of the characters in the game are random, besides special unique characters, you can add your own custom characters design their head and body, their faces, hats, extras, hair, color and shit, name them and give them a pork and trait, and you can pick family members, friends, or just a bunch of made up characters all you want. And they can also appear along the game along with other randos and unique characters. So when you start your death road trip, there's not really a story, you just live in Florida and, well, zombie apocalypse happens, and to Canada you go, because apparently it's the only safe place in the world left. So you get to pick a leader and a buddy. You can load any of your pre-made characters, or you can just hit random and have all kinds of weird characters come into existence. Now, this obviously gives you a lot of ability to at least start out decently by picking traits and perks, which you can unlock additional or upgrade them to be more powerful and better. Game modes, there's a very variety of game modes to go to boot. Where you have normal mode, familiar killers mode, where you have your custom killers appeal more, whale killer mode, where whale killers appeal more, you got tr uh, short trip mode, that's just a shorter play session, a long winding road, that's longer, deadly road, where it's just more harder, and then it starts going bonkers with whale killer extreme, which is just harder and endless mode, and just all kinds of fucking insane modes. So you get a lot, you get to unlock them as you clear different modes. So it gives you a nice variety. And the mode system doesn't affect your trophy progress too much if you're going for trophies, too. Many trophies involve getting a lot of whale characters out into Canada, but there are a few, like beating Deadly or Mode is a trophy in that. So, beating most of the modes or trophy themselves, but a vast majority are getting characters into Canada, along with a few other special traits. So you get to choose a lot there, and you start on your path. Now, depending on your characters you choose, and the traits and porks and that, you may get other starting stuff, like the car nut starts off with a really good car and things. And then generally how it plays is similar to the Oregon Trail. You'll get random events on the road, but you'll also get opportunities where you get sieged or go out to explore. The going out to explore sections, you'll usually get a list of two to four sections, and then usually an option to look around more at the penalty cost of more of your gas resources, and you go to explore different areas for goods, ammo, guns, weapons, food, gas, everything you need. Sometimes you can also find additional things that will increase your character stats. Each character has strength, fitness, shooting, wits, attitude, composure, loyalty, morale, medical, and mechanical. Giving them all kinds of different effects during different events. For example, having car issues, being mechanical be good, people injured, medical be good. Then so on events of bandits, attacks, and that can have effects with composure and things, attitude, 
loyalty can affect how likely someone may betray you in certain events or run off or steal your things like there's a lot of different things that can happen depending on your stats some good and many many are bad so you just have to learn the ins and outs of traits and characters I like using a lot of the familial characters over Wando's but you can get some good Wando's too but if you have if you like making characters based on friends and stuff you'll have a lot of fun with this in that regard lots and lots of fun I made a number based on my viewers and friends and things and it's just been a lot of fun playing now this isn't a very story driven esque game this is more the type of game you play more and more of because like I said it's not really a story you're just you're you start in Florida and you head off to Canada because the zombie apocalypse started and you've heard well Canada is apparently safe and that's pretty much all the story now, Kalos can have more or less in different stats, health and strength and that, making them good and bad at wielding different things. Obviously having better strength with weapons and more shooting for guns and that. And there's a pretty decent gun variety too. You got pistols, handguns, well different kinds of pistols and handguns, a few revolvers, shotguns. You get a lot of options and you gotta be very careful with your car and exploring because zombies can appear on the map and cut out your loot so sometimes you may be forced to abandon your car if you're not good but while on the road it plays a lot like the Oregon Trail having weird RNG events that can affect you positively or negatively and challenging checks depending on your stats now you can have a party up to four people, but the more people you have, the more food your party consumes. And plus, there are unique scenarios and characters that can cause more or less food to be eaten, just depending on overall what's going on. But overall, I really enjoy the RNG in this. Now, this is on PC, PS4. I think it's also on, let me get a quick check here, I don't think it's on Xbox One, I don't believe, I believe it was on, I think it was also available on, let's see, Steam, GOG, so you can get a DOM free version, it is on Xbox One, I know there's a, okay, so it's on Steam, you can get it on GOG for DOM free, uh, it's on PS4, which is the version you're seeing, it has a Nintendo Switch, it is on Xbox One, however, if you want physically, it's only available on PS4 and Nintendo Switch through PlayAsia, it was a exclusive title they sold, and uh, if you want the Nintendo Switch version, you're looking at $39, and if you want the PS4 version, you're looking at at $34 and those are still at the time of this video available through Play Asia, a or multi-language in that. Now if you're looking for digital on all digital fronts it's $14.99 which is a decent uh, price on that. Now is it worthy of getting a physical? I really been enjoying the game myself like I love zombie games and this is also one that you can play cooperative. Uh, I believe all the console versions are only two player only, but recently they added four player into the PC version. I do not know if that may get added into the console version, but so that could change depending on things. But this is a very delightful game. If you're into zombie smashing type games, and believe me, some of the scenarios get crazy. Because the longer the world and the closer the cannon you get, the more horrible it gets with the sieges. Which are events where zombies overwhelm your party and you're forced to defend and survive. And that can be quite dreadful. I've had many terrible encounters before Well. Many terrible people have died in buildings, especially. Especially in the last scenarios until you get the use to it. Interestingly, there is a small bit of stealth in the game, but it's not that big unless the map is pretty huge. 
Basically, zombies all attracted to loud sounds like guns and things, but it doesn't usually come into play as a big thing too often. It can be a little veiling. But overall, I really enjoyed it. Now, I haven't got to play with anyone in this, but I have seen some people play co-op. A minor gripe I've seen with co-op a lot, especially with the new full player update, is when someone dies and has to pick control of characters and that. And apparently with the full player update, the problem is that you have to do it when the stage starts and not prior, like when you go out of your car to do raids for houses, hospitals, going through buildings or running through the sewers and such. So that can depend a lot, Voyardy. But, as I said, there's no real story. It's just a lot of weird, funny shit. I mean, this game does not take itself too serious. I mean, hell, you can find a guy who sells anime shit. You can find a lot of unique characters. Like, I found Jason Elvis, a bodybuilder who can throw cars. Um, the good fairy... Um, Octodad, and there's a lot of reference guest characters to other indie games and reference characters to properties. Like, I've, I've ran into a character that's a reference to Cloud, a character that's a reference to Ali from Chrono Trigger. You know, there's a lot of silly, weird shit in this game. It doesn't take itself very serious, but if you want to survive your road to Canada, that part you may have to take serious. But overall, it's a pretty hilarious game for little pixelated zombies that overwhelm you way too fucking much. And learning the mechanics is just one part of survival to Canada. Because when I first played, I, I got to Canada with uh, Jason Voorhees. Uh, who had a weird mechanic of actually murdering people depending on his morale throughout the journey. So, <laughs> you have to kind of keep it in flux. I believe he murdered two people during uh, that playthrough, I believe. But, it, it's a pretty interesting game. I definitely recommend it. But is it worth the 30 plus bucks for a physical version? Personally, like for the PS4 version, I think $34 is a great price to add this physically to your collection. I know a lot of limited copies of games can have varying, like Red Arts has had a few games that are kind of blundered dundles that are just really cheap digitally and aren't very interesting, but this is a... I really enjoyed this game, so I definitely glad I got a physical version myself. But whether it's worth the 39 for the Switch version or the 34 for the PS4 version through PlayAsia, that's you'll have to make up your own mind. And there's the possibility of finding it through eBay and that possibly cheaper, because so unlimited games sometimes actually do go a bit down. Scalpels of kind of milled out more since there's so many more companies with this game but I would say it's definitely worth a solid twenty dollars at least to me even though that's digitally priced for $14.99 but I like it it has a lot of replay value especially if you're playing with friends and you could have lots of hilarious moments in this game it's I really like it and I just keep playing it a lot but if you're being stingy, you know, 15 bucks digitally is a pretty good price. And, like, actually right now it's for sale for $8.99 on PSN as the recording of this video. So, you know, you always got sales options too. But sadly, no physical for Xbox One. But hey, you can also do DRM free with GOG. So there's a lot of good options with this game. I definitely recommend it. Check it out if you love zombie games. Basically, if I was to give it a tagline, I would call it the Pixelated Dead Rising Organ Trail game. And that's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you feel like you've learned something interesting from this video, please feel free to leave a like. It helps the Proving Grounds grow so much more. But if you feel you've learned nothing of interest at all, you can leave a dislike guilt-free. Until next time, be careful on the death road to Canada, because those zombie hordes, 
そうか。そう